Welcome back to Simply Money. Are you ready to monetize your channel in just six weeks? Today, I'm going to share my journey on how I achieved YouTube success in just six weeks. But wait, there's more. I'll be revealing a secret tip at the end on what I believe is the key to the success of getting monetized in just six weeks. I'll be sharing this tip at the end, so make sure you stay tuned to learn how I skyrocketed my growth and you too can do the same on your channel. Let me start by saying this is not actually just about money. Even though this channel is simply money and we focus on how to become financially free, I wanted to do this video because a lot of people are trying to supplement their income through YouTube. So for those that are, this can become a means of passive income. I want to talk to you about that in another video on an even better strategy to passive income than YouTube, but we're going to focus on YouTube today. So first, let's talk about setting the foundation for your YouTube channel. I started by identifying my why. The most important thing is why did you want to start a YouTube channel? If you don't understand what it is you're trying to accomplish, you will get burned out doing this. You have to have a passion and a why behind this. So on those days when it's a grind, you can grind through. I'm just going to say YouTube is not passive to begin with. It is a lot of work, but we'll talk about how it can become passive once you put the work in up front. So setting the foundation includes first identifying your target audience. For me, I'm talking about money, but money is a big wide topic. So I want to narrow it down even further to achieving financial freedom. What were the things needed? What were the steps required to achieve financial freedom? I wanted to help provide insights, tools, encouragement, motivation, all toward helping others achieve financial freedom. Then I had to identify who was I going to be reaching? You cannot reach everybody. If you try to talk to everybody, you'll talk to nobody. So I had to identify who my target audience was. It's not just people. People. It's not just males or females. I had to get specific. What age demographic? What geographical location? What were their other interests that could pull them toward learning what I have to share and being engaged with this community? So I wanted to make sure my niche wasn't just about talking to people interested in money. I don't want to get off onto topics like how to get rich quick or how to use debt to make money or how to leverage your house. That's not who I am. That's not what I want to teach and that's not what I'm passionate about. I had to focus my niche on who was looking to become financially free. Those who wanted to use debt management to get out of debt. Those that wanted to understand budgeting, how important it is, how to do it. What are some of the tools and apps available? I wanted to talk to people who were interested in learning how to invest beyond just putting their money in the bank and losing value as inflation eats away at your saving. I wanted to talk to people about how to invest in safe index funds to diversify Diversify your investment while making good gains of 10 and 12% interest. Building toward a wealthy future that is financially free from the burden of having to rely on a job. This is to encourage people who want to become debt free. This is to encourage people who want to be self-sufficient. If they choose to work, that's fine. But to have the means by which they don't have to work if they don't want. And they have income being provided by the money they have invested in generating passive income. That's my target audience. I had to get down into the dirt with this in order to know what it was I was going to focus on on this channel. That's step number one. Next, I had to focus on optimizing my content. You can't just make a video and throw it on YouTube. There are those out there that'll say, oh, you can get this so easy. This is a lot of work. And optimizing your content is vital to making sure that you're being seen. Just because you know who your audience is and you've identified who they are and what they're looking for doesn't mean they're gonna find your video. You need to optimize your content in order for it to find them. I launched my first video on July 26, 2023. I can tell you just in the short time that I've been doing this, I've made a lot of improvements, a lot of changes. The first thing I had to do was decide I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to wait until it's perfect. I'm not going to wait until I understand all the ins and outs of YouTube. I'm just going to start and I'm going to make small incremental improvements along the way. So from that video, I began to analyze how to optimize my uploads, how to input keywords, how to research keywords, 
words. How to understand how to do the search engine optimization. There's a lot to learn. But the good news is there's resources available. Get on YouTube. There's other channels that all they do is teach how to optimize your videos. There's channels that teach how to make good thumbnails. So in order to optimize my content, I had to do a lot of studying, a lot of learning. In fact, that first video was 30 minutes long. I kind of laugh looking back because I just got on the camera, turned it on, and started talking about the things I wanted this channel to be about. And it turned into a 30 minute video. I shared it after I uploaded with some friends and family and asked for their opinion, their feedback. And the first thing I heard was it's too long. So I cut that up into three segments. I kept the original on there, but then I made three smaller 10 minute videos out of that to see how that performed. And so I began analyzing the differences. Then I had to analyze the thumbnails, the creative portion of that, the text that were on those. Optimizing requires a lot of little things. It's a lot of work that you have to be willing to do. But if you want to get monetized, you want your channel to be able to earn money, you have to do the hard work. This is not an easy, get rich quick opportunity. This is a great opportunity for those willing to work that have the desire to put in the effort. Additionally, in optimizing, I had to continue to figure out how to better engage my audience. It's one thing to have a great thumbnail and title that people click on, and then they click off as soon as they start seeing or hearing you. So I had to learn and prove how to engage my audience. There are things I've done. I began doing polls on my channel. I send out inspirational quotes. I'm doing other things to engage them throughout the, the video. It's just small improvements. The biggest thing I'm trying to do is just be real and authentic, just to speak from the heart about things I'm passionate about and build a community of like-minded people who are passionate and want to encourage one another in their financial freedom journey. Whether they're just starting out or they're already financially free and they want to be a continual support to others or learn how to continually build their wealth even though they're financially free. Now the third step, this one is where a lot of people fall short. They say, I want to be a YouTube creator. I want to be a YouTube influencer or whatever term they want to use and they don't do a consistent uploading schedule. They maybe put a video on and then two months later they put another video on. Three months after that they put the couple on in two days. It's just not consistent. They may have gotten some subscribers from their first videos and some others come along. They may get a lot of shares on that video but they're not building a community. Building a community is the vital part because people want to see consistency. If they like what you're telling them and they're enjoying the material you're providing, they want to see this on a regular basis. They want to know when they can expect to hear something else from you. And even though you may share something the next time that's not quite what they were looking for, they know they can expect there's going to be more material on a regular basis. Now, there's a lot of people out there that'll tell you you need to upload on a regular basis daily or three times a day or weekly or monthly. I don't think there's one set way that's perfect. I think you need to find what works for you. You need to know what can be maintainable for you. You need to know what you're able to come up with to create good content, because it's not just about quantity. I would say at the beginning, it's better to do some quantity and then work on the quality as you improve. But if you're only waiting to get a perfect video and doing it once every two months, you're not gonna build the community. So get into it, don't worry about perfection, and then make improvements along the way, but be diligent about looking and improving and making small adjustments, every video should be slightly better than the prior one. And if it's not, then that can be an experiment saying, okay, that didn't work. Let's go on and try something different. I chose because I wanted to be monetized as quickly as possible that I was uploading on a daily basis to begin with. And once I got going and built up a little repertoire, I've been doing two shorts a day and then twice a week, one of those uploads instead of being a short is a longer video such as this one. So every Wednesday and Saturday, I upload a longer video of me talking and sharing new insights on the topic of my audience. That's the path I chose. Now you can choose to do it and you'll probably get monetized a little bit slower if you choose to do it weekly. But whatever you choose, be consistent with it, stick with it, and don't miss it. That's the key. Consistently uploading is the key to your success.
So when I first began, it was very daunting because I had to get the video made, I had to edit it, I had to do the thumbnail, I had to create everything, and then I had to get it uploaded. And I was basically rushing to get it uploaded in time. But as I've been able to build and learn and get quicker at things, now I'm scheduling out because the good thing about YouTube is you can schedule further out. So I have videos ready to go, they're already in the queue, they're scheduled, and I'm not rushing on this video to get it done to make sure I'm meeting my demand of upload time, I'm getting this done so I can schedule it in a week or two. I'm trying to stay ahead of the game and I continue to build that. And then I will have occasional things that are hot topics. Maybe it's a news breaking story that I want to get out and I'll throw that out as a special upload. But I'm never rushed now with my editing and with my time because I have a set schedule. The fourth key is engagement with my audience. And I know I just spoke on this a moment ago slightly, but I want to get a little deeper in this because this is key. You can have really good content. You can have all the great thumbnails and all the great SEO, but if your audience isn't engaging, you're not going to progress. And it'll take time to build that community and to find those who are truly wanting to be part of your community. Just the conversation you have with people. Take the time to reply to comments. Take time to ask questions within your video. Like for example, right now, what is it about this video that most resonates with you? Throw that down in the comments, let me know, and I'd be glad to reply to you and thank you for being a subscriber. So asking people to subscribe, asking people to like and comment, it's okay. That's encouraging them to engage. That's welcoming them to be part of the community. I encourage all of you to throw comments. It's okay if you don't like what I'm saying. Please be nice. You don't have to be rude, but you can tell me, I don't like how you do your video. I don't like your background. I don't like how you present things. I think you need to do this. I'm open to that. I'm trying to improve. Again, don't be nasty. There's no reason for that, but you can share honestly. I'm okay with a good hearted joke too. I know I have gray hair. It's okay. I'm getting old. I'm happy with my old age. I embrace things, but let's communicate. Let's have a nice conversation and talk and become a community where we can help each other. I hope I can help inspire you to financial freedom. And we talk throughout this channel about ways to do that. I want to encourage you to engage in this conversation so I can help encourage you along your journey to financial freedom as well. So engage your audience. That was one of the keys that I continue to work on improving and expanding to grow my channel that helped me to get to monetization in just six weeks. Now, once you're monetized, there's a lot of different options. Most people just think about, oh, now I have ads running and I get a revenue from that. And I haven't decided exactly where I'm going to go at this point. Point, I may take ads off of my channel. I'm going to evaluate it and see how my audience responds to it. There's other ways you can monetize your work, whether it be through sponsorships and you talk about a particular item that somebody's paying you to talk about. You can do memberships where people join your channel and pay a small fee for special perks like one-on-one -on -one coaching, live chats, different things. And I'm exploring all of those, but I'm waiting to hear what my audience wants because that's what I want to provide. I didn't start this channel so I could get paid. I started it so I could help other people achieve financial freedom and being monetized for my work and effort is just to me a natural part of work. But that's not what's driving it. If the driving factor of your YouTube channel is to get paid, then you're going to lose focus of your why, the very thing that triggered this. And you always have to keep your why at the forefront. Now you can shift. I'm shifting my topic slightly as I see what my audience wants. I really enjoy talking about retirement, investments, but more and more of my audience is wanting to learn about budgeting and debt management. So I'm trying to focus a little bit more on that at this time until the audience dictates what they want, as long as it's within the bounds of what I desire to talk about and share on this channel. And that's okay. Audience should dictate what drives your topics. And I'll experiment on other topics to see, hey, did this find interest in you? Do I watch my audience start engaging with a particular topic that I didn't think would be that relevant, but they have engaged in it. So to me, that says, I want to focus on this because this is what they want to learn about. I love education for children that's driven by their interest. Doesn't mean you don't teach and talk about all the elements of things they need to learn, but you allow their interest drive what they deep dive in their learning. If somebody's really into a topic, then that's what I want them reading about. If I want a child to read, I need to find a topic they're passionate about and they'll read all the time. But if we're forcing them to only read what we think they need to read, they're not going to be passionate. Starting a YouTube channel is no different. I want people to have understanding of financial literacy and education, but I want to do it in a way of what they need, not what I think they need. 
And that's key when you're doing your monetization, when you're building your channel and growing it. And now the secret tip I promised, leveraging the power of collaboration. Now I guarantee you there's probably another channel, if not hundreds of channels, doing exactly what you are wanting to do. What you need to do is not just look at them as competition, but look at them as collaborating partners. What are they doing that's successful? And emulate that. Don't copy it, but emulate it. Learn, maybe it's the topic. Maybe it's the way they present. Maybe it's their background. Whatever it is that seems to be drawing their growth, learn from that. Those that aren't doing well, learn from that as well. Some of the best lessons in life come from our mistakes or the mistakes of others. Education is expensive. And sometimes making mistakes is expensive and we learn and we move and we grow from that. But collaborating, learning, watching other people's videos and seeing how they are doing things, looking at thumbnails and comparing thumbnails one from another and learning, improving. Try doing a video with a thumbnail and then change the thumbnail and see if your click-through rate went up or down. That collaboration, reach out to another creator who is maybe around the same stage of development as you are and see if you can collaborate together. Then you can help influence one another and grow together. There's plenty of room on the platform for everybody and learning to collaborate together can be a vital step in helping one another. That is key to growing your channel. And that's how I was able to monetize my channel to get a thousand subscribers and over 4,000 watch hours in under six weeks. You can do it too, but if you don't, it's okay. There's not a race to this. I chose to work this full time until I got monetized. And now I'm pulling back and getting my schedule set to where it'll be a part-time opportunity. Stay tuned for my next video where I'm going to share how I went from zero to over 30k subs in seven weeks. I'll throw the link below or check it out here. Thanks for joining me on Simply Money. I hope you find these videos encouraging. I hope you find these videos engaging. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, throw a comment down below that you subscribed. And I want to thank you for being a subscriber. Also, share this video with anybody you think might be benefited from it. You may know somebody trying to create a YouTube channel and hopefully this can encourage them along the way. And we'll see you next time on Simply Money.